What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Sean Strickland gets called out by UFC fighter. Sean Strickland has said he plans to wait for another crack at the UFC's middleweight title, but not surprisingly, fighters continue to call out the former champion. Case in point, following Nazardine Imavov's victory last night, more on that in a moment, he told Paul Felder, through his translator, that he wants to fight Strickland. My goal is to get the belt. For me, for my family, for everyone around me. My goal is the belt, so I'd like to fight Sean Strickland in Paris. Sean Strickland, if you want to do it, come to Paris, and we're going to fight together. Could Strickland abandon his plan to wait for a title shot and head across the pond to fight Imavov? Anything's possible. But don't bet on it. Not only does Strickland have little to gain by fighting the lower-ranked Imavov, his win on Saturday is being widely discussed and debated. While Imavov clearly had Jared Cannonier in all sorts of trouble during the fourth round, the hulking middleweight never went down. Further, when referee Jason Herzog intervened and stopped the fight, it actually looked like Cannonier was starting to recover. Imavov, however, thought that the stoppage was warranted. While talking to ESPN after the card through his translator, Imavov said this, Absolutely not an early stoppage. It's the job of the referee to decide if the fighter is able to keep going or not. He already took a lot of damage, and he would have taken even more if the fight would have continued, so I think it was the right decision to stop it. While some folks may agree with Imovov's take, plenty of observers were piling on Herzog for stopping the fight when he did. Check it out. Horrible. Way too early to call it. Whoever the ref is never needs to ref a main event again. Fights like this have me questioning sometimes if the UFC is rigged. Herzog is a great referee, but it does seem like he jumped the gun a tad early, right? What do you think? Now let's look at Tom Aspinall getting help from Leon Edwards for UFC 304. Tom Aspinall is going to fight alongside his fellow countryman, Leon Edwards, at UFC 304. As it turns out, the welterweight champion is helping the interim heavyweight champ prepare for his bout, but it's not in the way you might expect. As you may know, Aspinall is scheduled to fight Curtis Blades at the July 27th card, which is going down in Manchester, England. Edwards, meanwhile, is booked to fight Bilal Muhammad. Since the card is a pay-per-view, however, the UFC has elected to once again have the card take place at the customary North American-centric time. You don't need to be a geography whiz to realize this means the card will begin in the wee hours of the morning in the United Kingdom. Consequently, the co-main and main event probably won't begin until around 5 a.m. local time. Yikes. So back to how Edwards is helping Aspinall for UFC 304. Recently, the interim champ spoke with the Title Sports Network, and he revealed the following. Yeah, so uh, Leon has employed a sleep specialist. Ooh. Well, I knew about this before because I know Leon's manager. So I was kind of like, I'm not going to set my like set anything in stone in my mind until I spoke to Leon on what he's doing. And Leon basically gave me a full breakdown of his sleep pattern. So I'm essentially going to copy Leon without paying a sleep specialist. <laughs> 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 that, well, that's the plan. I don't want to pay anybody. So Leon, uh, I'm just I'm, I'm just getting the advice off Leon and I'm just following what Leon's doing. Yeah. Now Aspinall also conceded in the interview that the fight times are probably harder for fans than the fighters. After all, fans probably won't have adrenaline pumping through them since no one is trying to concuss them in the octagon. But fighting at the crack of dawn can't be easy. Up next, Shavkat Rachmanov calls out Kamaru Usman and Colby Covington. Shavkat Rachmanov has yet to fight in 2024, and it seems clear the rising welterweight is chomping at the bit to change that. Case in point, recently, the undefeated fighter accused Kamaru Usman and Colby Covington of ducking him. Rachmanov has yet to compete since he cruised through Stephen Thompson at UFC 296 last December. That victory was the Uzbekistan-born fighter's sixth victory in the octagon and moved his overall record to an impressive 18-0. Well, more recently, the 29-year-old posted the following comment via X. JDM is hurt. Usman and Colby don't want it. I'm ready to face the winner of Leon vs. Bilal. So if you're not a huge MMA fan, you may not realize that JDM is a reference to another surging welterweight, Jack Della Maddalena. But that aside, the timing of the comment is interesting, with respect to the Usman callout. Recently, footage of a docuseries about the UFC was shared out, in which Usman's manager, Ali Abdelaziz, was recorded saying that the former champion wanted to fight Stephen Thompson next over Rachmanov. Now, the series was filmed a little while ago, so perhaps Usman has or could change his mind, but it'll be interesting to see if either he or Colby accept the challenge. Chances are, not too many people are holding up their hands to fight Rachmanov these days. Up next, Yuri Prohaska reveals big news. Another fighter who's been generating discussions lately as to who and when he'll fight next is Yuri Prohaska. The former light heavyweight champ is coming off a second round stoppage of Alexander Rakic in April, which brought Yuri back to the win column after he was taken out by Alex Pajeda in November. 
Well, according to a recent post from social media, MMA legend Grabaka Hitman, Prohaska's reporting his next fight is set, but the Czech Samurai stopped short of saying who it's against. So it'll be interesting to see who will step across from him in the octagon. Recently, there's been speculation that the UFC is looking at having Prohaska and Pejeda throw down again. Another possibility is that it's Magomed Ankalaev, but if the UFC goes that route, that would likely mean that Pejeda remains on the sidelines for a little while, since Prohaska and Ankalaev are ranked number one and two respectively. UFC fighter reveals shocking news. It's no secret that plenty of fighters like to party after they compete, or that they indulge in certain, let's say, habits, where they're not in training camp. But it's not often that you learn that here in 2024, a fighter smokes the day of a fight, as in, before the fight happens. Yes, recently, a video clip circulated which showed UFC welterweight Carlos Prates lighting up a ciggy in Louisville, where he competed on Saturday night. In addition, following Prates' stoppage victory at the event, he confirmed to Full Send MMA that he's been smoking for years. Yeah, bro, I, I think I, I smoke since in my 15 years old. I have more time living smoking than without smoking. So for me, it's normal. I smoke before the fight, on the day of the fight, and you know, it's normal. So now we're here in Louisville, so i trying to go drink some whiskey because here is capital of whiskey and I really like whiskey, and that's it. It's kind of surprising to hear this, right? Based on what Prates said, you actually have to wonder if the dude is in fact a chain smoker. But all the health questions and dangers around smoking aside, Prates must be doing something right. The Brazilian fighter has won 11 straight fights now. What's next for Raul Rosas Jr. after huge win? At UFC Louisville, Raul Rosas Jr. secured another win to take further steps away from his only loss to date. So now, it'll be interesting to see what's next for the highly touted prospect. Rosas faced Ricky Tercios at the event. If you saw the fight, you know that Tercios may have cursed himself by telling Raul to F off rather than touch gloves. Things didn't go so well for him as he was tapped out in round two. Heading into the scrap, there was apparently some heat between Rosas and Tercios. After their first booking to fight earlier this year fell through. During the post-fight presser, Rosas revealed the following about the conversation he had with Tercios after he tapped him out. He was telling me our respect and I was like, yeah, our respect. And he said that he had the same thing planned, like tell me it was our respect. And I was like, yeah, I was like, um, you disrespected me first though, you know? I was like, you disrespected me by, by over here saying, uh, uh, that I pulled out this or that and he was like no you disrespected me first by by breaking the Bushido code or whatever and um, and then I was like I was like bro that's something I couldn't control you know I was sick and he told me that he was sick as well he told me he had staff this week his knee whatever whatever well, now Roses can focus on what lies ahead rather than his beef with Tercios. Speaking of that, the 19-year-old was asked about his plans moving forward, and Roses acknowledged that he wants a big fight. He also reported he'd like to fight at the UFC's upcoming card at the Sphere in Vegas, since it's going down on Mexican Independence Day. Don't be surprised if we see Rosas Jr. competing on that card. Not only does it make sense because he's from Mexico, but the promotion is still finalizing the lineup and having Rosas on the main card would be a great way to shine an even bigger spotlight on him. Ryan Garcia arrested on felony charges. Ryan Garcia continues to make headlines following the boxing star's huge win over Devin Haney in April, but he's doing so for all the wrong reasons. If you follow boxing, you know that Garcia shocked many throughout combat sports by becoming the first man to defeat Haney. Garcia dropped Haney three times in a highly anticipated fight before receiving the decision win. The massive victory has been tainted, however, since Garcia tested positive for banned substances following the bout. Garcia has denied knowingly taking any PEDs. Well, more recently, Garcia is back in the news as the result of being arrested in Beverly Hills for allegedly vandalizing a hotel room. The 25-year-old was suspected of being under the influence of alcohol and or drugs when he was taken away by police. Now, given Garcia has never been shy about the fact he likes to party, maybe this news isn't all that shocking for you. But what's really interesting is that it looks like Garcia knew something was gonna go down on June 8th. Check out the post he made back in March. We'll just have to wait and see what Garcia has to say about all this. Should be interesting. Alex Pajeda fires back at Jamal Hill after Jamal called Alex out for taunting him during his celebration. During a recent interview, Alex had this to say to Jamal. Well, to be honest, I kind of don't get why he's doing this so late. It's been almost two months. People usually do that right away, but maybe he just woke up for the knockout. Conor McGregor receives a warning before his UFC 303 fight with Michael Chandler. 
Rumors of Conor fighting for a title shot if he beats Michael Chandler have been surfacing lately, and Islam Makhachev's manager, Ali Abdelaziz, weighed in on the possible matchup during a recent interview. He feels that the fight is possible, but Conor has to get off of the alcohol and drugs before it can happen. Here's what Ali had to say to Conor. Listen, it's very possible, but you know, Conor has to get off the bottle and he has to leave the drugs alone and, and focus. And he, he's definitely, the guy was a two division champion. I'm not, he has talent, you know? But is the hard work now is there or not there anymore? You have to ask him this question. Top comments. DC knows John is a snake. You seem to be developing. Fake John is so cringy. Edit. Awesome to see so many people defend John. Good to see more LGBTQ plus support in this community. People pretend DC is always being a hater, but John Jones is always so damn hateable. Hunter manipulated Aljo into accepting the fight so that their favorite golden boy would win. Wow, he is definitely a worthy successor of Dana.